Dear students, welcome to the EPG Patshara. I am Dr. Gurmeet Singh, Professor in University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the module analysis of Raman spectroscopy under the paper of Surface Analytical Techniques 2. In analysis part, we will talk about the sampling which includes the macro and micro sampling both and we will also discuss the applications of this spectroscopy that is Raman spectroscopy in forensic and other sciences. Then from here we shall go over to some examples like Raman spectrum of cholesterol which shall give us the various frequencies at which different groups can be identified. Let's talk about sampling. In this we shall be talking about scattering geometries. There are two types of geometries in which a sample is analyzed in Raman spectroscopy. In the 90 degrees mode, Raman spectroscopy geometry is the laser beam where direction is at the right angles to the collection lens. On the contrary, in the 180 degree scattering geometry, which is also known as the back scattering mode, these two areas are coincident. That's the important point in this. The 90 degree scattering geometry is normally used in the conventional Raman spectroscopy, whereas in 90 degrees and 180 degrees both, these are frequently used in FT, IR, FT Raman spectroscopy. Now we come to macro sampling and micro sampling. Samples analysis in Raman spectroscopy was carried out at the macro scale. With the advancement of a Raman micro probe system, now sample area as small as 1 micron can be studied. Average information of a large sample region is obtained when a specimen is studied using the macro sampling approach. Same thing happens when heterogeneous sample at micro level is analyzed. As an illustration, for a specimen woody tissue, Raman spectrum when recorded in the macro mode provides an average band that contains different and concurrently contributions from microphological distinct area. In contrast to what I was explaining, spectra that are characterized solely on the middle lamella or secondary wall or vascular bundle or any other physically different area in the woody tissue can only be attained by using a Raman microprobe. A microprobe occupied with a Raman spectrometer is matched with an optical microscope. The microscope objective has a dual role to play. One is to focus on the incident laser beam and the second is to collect the scattered light. Depending upon the various spatial resolutions are used with different magnifications fixed with objective lenses. For instance, applications. As I said, there are many applications of this spectroscopy. The list of Raman spectroscopy is vast in forensic applications, which includes drug identification, cellulose fiber, and different ink comparisons, age evolution, and analysis of fingerprints. There is the advantage is there is no special sample preparation required and the amount of tested material that is needed could be as low as several pictograms or femtoliters. This is dealing with the Raman spectroscopy and here it has been shown that there is a Raman spectra which is indicated in this slide. Raman spectrum basically is a vibrational spectroscopy wherein uh, as we had explained earlier also we look at the change in polarizability of the molecule when there is a change in the dipole moment we also have vibrational spectroscopy and that's called ir spectroscopy in raman what we notice is that this is for those where there is a change in the polarizability Raman spectrum is a plot, therefore, of the intensity of Raman's scattered radiation as a function of its frequency difference from the incident radiations. Usually, this is done in the units of wave numbers. 
and this is what has been shown in the spectra. This difference is called the Raman shift. It is to be noted here that because it is a difference value, the Raman shift is independent of the frequency of the incident radiation. Stoke scattered Raman spectra of two different methyl chlorosilicane plotted on the same set of axes has been shown here. These are the two different methyl chlorosilane which have been shown here in this slide. Each has a characteristic set of peaks that allows it to be distinguished from the other one. This is a very clear spectra which has been indicated here and very lucidly this uh, is shown in the two spectra. One is methyl uh, chlorosilane and the other is methyl chlorosilane with a hydrogen molecule on it. First is dimethyl, the second is one methyl. So two chlorosilanes have been shown here. What is Raman spectroscopy used for? After having explained the basic principles and the kind of instrumentation which is there and what is the primary difference when we compare this with the IR spectroscopy, uh, we finally come down to the application of the Raman spectroscopy. What is it in the wake of uh, the emergence of high performance Raman imaging equipment? Raman spectroscopy is now used in a variety of fields. Year after year, new applications arise as new markets and industries develop. But in spite of this, the level of awareness of Raman spectroscopy is not as high as that of the analytical methods that everyone knows. Everyone is using IR spectroscopy to a great deal. But with the advent of this Raman spectroscopy, this is also being used for analysis of a variety of substances. Now, what are we using it for? Number one is identifying an unknown substance. Number two is identifying polymorphous compounds. Then tracking changes in molecular structures. Then tracking a change in crystallinity of the substance. Finally, evaluating the magnitude of residual stress which is there from the other methods is not very easy to find out. One of the very important things here in the case of applications is the molecular structures when they are changing, that can be tracked very conveniently with the help of Raman spectroscopy. Raman spectra has been shown which indicates fingerprinting region of a molecule. This first figure shows Raman spectra, which is molecular specific. Whenever you take Raman spectra, it is extremely molecule specific. Spectra contains information about vibrational mode of the molecule. Spectra have sharp features, allowing identification of the molecule by its spectrum. So this is the advantage when you record a Raman spectra. This spectra shows the Raman spectrum of cholesterol molecule. It's a large molecule and uh, very sharp peaks have been noticed in this spectrum. The Raman spectrum of uh, cholesterol molecule, which has been given in the earlier slide. Figure above represents Raman spectrum of cholesterol, which is representative of a biological molecule as shown in the earlier figure. The spectrum is a plot of scattered light against the change in frequency which is related to the incident light. The Raman peak at 1440 centimeters inverse is characteristic of CH2 and CH3 deformation vibrations. However, the peak at 1670 centimeters inverse is due to C double bond C stretching vibrations. In case of a sample having biological tissue with cholesterol, Raman spectra has all these peaks present. The molecular structure and composition of a material under consideration is encoded as a set of frequency shifts in the Raman scattered light. Therefore, the Raman spectra can provide a fingerprint of a substance from which the molecular composition can be determined. Raman spectroscopy of graphite has been shown. It's a nanocrystalline graphite which has been shown. 
it shows the G and the disordered D peaks. The characteristic dimension of graphitic domains are given by a relation which has been shown in this slide. Drummond spectrum of graphite and graphene. Uh, it shows a comparison. And this comparison has been beautifully brought out by the Raman spectra given in individual slides of these materials. The figure above represents the Raman spectrum of graphene and bulk graphite measured at a wavelength of 514.5 nanometers. The peaks present at 1580 centimeters inverse and 2700 centimeters inverse are the most intense ones. Here the G peak is at 1580 centimeter inverse whereas G0 peak is at 2700 centimeter inverse. G0 is the second most prominent peak observed in graphite samples. However, the band is actually a D peak. Therefore, it is always favorable to call this as a 2D peak. Another peak appears at 3250 centimeters inverse that is higher and double the intensity of G peak. Hence, it is not a second order one. The second figure displays a prominent change in the shape and intensity of the 2D peak of graphene in comparison to that of the bulk graphene. In case of uh, graphite, the 2D peaks consist of two components, 2D1 and 2D2. The intensities of these peaks are roughly 1 4 and 1 half of the height of the G peaks. Graphene appears to have single sharp 2D peak that is four times more intense than G peak. Diagnostic advantages of Raman spectroscopy. There are many advantages of this, which includes wavelength spectrum, no biopsy is required, direct measurement of molecule in which we require a very small concentration, chemical composition, we can analyze that, morphological analysis can be done, quantitative analysis can be carried out, and in vivo diagnostics can also be done. It deals with the microspectroscopy when we talk about Raman spectroscopy studies. Microscopic analysis for carrying out this, Raman spectroscopy offers several advantages. As it is a scattering technique, specimens do not need to be fixed or sectioned. Raman structure can be obtained from a very small volume. Water usually does not generally, for the microscopic analysis of minerals, materials such as polymers and ceramics, as well as the other ones for uh, finding out forensic traces, this is being used. A Raman microscope starts with a standard optical microscope and then adds on to an excitation laser. Then we have a monochromator and a sensitive detector like charge coupled device, which is abbreviated as CCD. FT Raman has also been used with microscopes. Ultraviolet microscopes and the UV enhanced op must be used when a UV laser source is used for Raman microspectroscopy. The uses are similar, but when we are using this microspectroscopy, even in very small amount, that is when they are present in traces, we are able to find out the, the quantum or the quality or the material which is present. And the example we have given is uh, polymers and ceramics. And uh, whatever sticks to it, for forensic application, this is a very useful spectroscopy. Having talked about the application, there are two main approaches which are used for imaging with the help of Raman spectroscopy. The first is direct imaging and second is hyperspectral or chemical imaging. In direct imaging approach, the whole field of view is examined for scattering over a small range of wave numbers. For example, a wave number characteristic or for cholesterol could be used to record the distribution of cholesterol within a cell culture. 
this is an extremely sensitive experiment which with the help of other techniques one would find it extremely difficult to do in hyperspectral imaging or chemical imaging thousands of raman spectra are collected from all over the field of view this data then is used to generate imaging showing the location and amount of different components taking the example of cell cultures for example a hyperspectral image could show the distribution of cholesterol as well as proteins nucleic acid and fatty acid which are being used for this kind of imaging here as i said even in small amounts when they are present they could be image but when we talk about cholesterol within a cell culture with the help of other methods it is extremely difficult to find out about this in a very accurate manner but with the help of direct imaging technique in raman spectra one can very accurately do this in a convenient manner talks about global raman imaging which is another approach that utilizes complete monochromatic images instead of reconstruction of images from acquired spectra this means that the imaging that we are doing it is not from any calculated or acquired spectra it is in fact a series of images that we do and then do the reconstruction from that this technique is suitable for the characterization of large scale devices and mapping of different compounds which makes it extremely useful that you can use it for characterization of the large scale devices and for mapping of different compound for example it has already been used for the characterization of graphene layers carbon nanotubes and multiple other 2d materials such as molybdenum disulfide or uh, tungsten selenide as it is written here wse2 as the excitation beam is dispersed over the whole field of view the measurements can be done without damaging the sample so this is one of the biggest advantages that without causing any damage to the sample we can view the excitation and dispersal of these over certain ranges and uh, materials like carbon nanotubes and graphene can be very beautifully analyzed with the help of this graphene as you know has layered structures and uh, this is beautifully demonstrated with the help of this particular technique here we talk about polarized analysis in the earlier slides we talked about the application of raman spectra but now we are talking about polarized analysis the polarization of raman scattered light also contains valuable information this property can be measured using plain polarized laser excitation and a polarization analyzer spectra acquired with the analyzer or set at both perpendicular and parallel to the excitation plane can be used to calculate the depolarization ratio study of the technique is useful in teaching the connections between group theory symmetry raman activity and peaks in the corresponding raman spectra as i had indicated earlier also that with the help of group theory we can very precisely arrive at a decision regarding which particular mode is going to be raman active and which is going to be ir active having calculated that theoretically with the help of group theory we can even experimentally measure and verify these results we can talk about symmetry through group theory of course and we can arrive at very many molecules which will have modes which will be raman active and one of the conditions mentioned there is that any molecule which deals with the changes in polarizability would be raman active raman activity and peaks in the corresponding raman spectra will obviously use polarized light polarized light only gives access to some of the raman active modes 
by rotating the polarization you can even gain access to the other modes each mode is separated according to its symmetry and that separation as per the symmetry can very properly be assessed with the help of group theory or symmetry as we call it the raman spectrum of organic molecules various organic molecules principally some frequencies can be connected with the typical types of molecular vibrations like c triple bond c stretching some examples are given or tabulated in the table given below which is for various molecules their chemical formulas are given their chemical name is given and reference values in centimeter inverse have also been given for example alkane the name is n hexane the formula is c6h14 ch2 in phase twist at 1305 to 1295 cm inverse is there then we have n heptane c2h16 cc skeletal stretching is given here at different values then branched alkane uh, have also been uh, taken here the formula is 224 trimethyl pentane the formula is c8h18 here c single bond c skeleton stretch branched alkane the values which are obtained are given in different regions this is a table in which we can see different frequencies are for different groups through which we can identify different molecules and groups for various uh, compounds in slide number 16 same thing continues and we have the example for a ketone ether carboxylic acid ester and amine for acetone the formula is ch32co and alkyl ketone c double bond o stretching values have been shown similarly for ether the main name and the formula and this main reference values of the peak are given same goes for carboxylic acid ester and amine the name given for an amine here is triethylamine c2h5 whole thrice n and it is tri substituted amine cn stretch values have been given here same thing continues for esters and amines ethyl acetate and triethylamine are the ones which have been illustrated here the formulas are given and the characteristics values have also been shown the comparison with intraset adsorption values have been given comparison with intraset absorption for various compounds various classes have been shown in terms of near infrared mid infrared and raman values so this comparison provides what way there is a change shown for various figures in other forms of raman spectroscopy we have different types where we indicate other forms of raman spectroscopy shows handheld raman spectroscopies handheld raman instruments are useful for the identification of chemicals they are designed for the safe use in manufacturing plant their environments and for military and chemical weapon applications raman resonance spectrometers uv lasers allow for better raman performance because of the inverse dependence on scattering but fluorescence also occur which becomes an issue in this with lasers in the range of 245 to 266 nanometer regions the raman spectra can be fitted in the region above the laser but below the normal stokes shifted fluorescence spectrum heating or cooling typically suitable for temperatures in the range of 196 degrees centigrade to about 600 degrees centigrade or ambient to 1500 degrees centigrade these stages can be used for solids powders and liquids then we come to catalysis a variant of the heating cooling stages above which i mentioned but designed to have preheated gases forced through a catalytic matrix 
This is suitable for temperatures up to about 1000 degrees centigrade and gas pressures up to about 5 bars. Tensile stress allows structural changes in a sample to be monitored under tensile strength. Forces up to 200 degrees, forces up to 200 uh, newtons can be used with these stages. Here, pressure diamond anvil cells have been given and they show or allow analysis at pressures up to 50 GPA with elevated temperatures. Humidity control of sample temperatures and humidity allows analysis of solvent adsorbate interactions. And the effect of humidity on a sample structure can also be determined. Talks about fields of applications. There are various fields of applications when we look at the usefulness of Raman spectroscopy. Some of those which have been illustrated here include semiconductors. When we look at semiconductors, we can measure the stress levels, contamination, super lattice structure, and defect investigations in this. We can also find out heterostructures and doping effects because this doping effect is very widely used in semiconductors. Then we come down to polymers. For polymers, polymorphous identification is one where it is very widely applied. Blend morphology, monomers and isomers analysis, crystallinity, orientation and polymerization. These are the applications which are concerning polymers. Then another area which is very important deals with geology, mineralogy and gemology. Here what is done is we can measure field inclusions, gemstones, phase transitions, mineral behavior under extreme conditions and mineral structures. Whatever way they vary can be found out with the help of this important spectroscopic technique. The applications of Raman spectroscopy in the area of forensic science and chemistry. In forensic sciences, we can very certainly find out the nature of illicit drugs and narcotics, paints, pigments, varnishes, fibers, explosives, inks, gems and other geological specimen. Gunshot residues can also be checked with the help of this. In chemistry applications, there are a variety of applications which one can talk about. Here, this will include phase transitions, catalysts, corrosion, oxides, electrochemistry, solid lubricants, silicon compounds, surfactants, emulsions, aqueous chemistry, and solvent analysis. These are a vast range of applications that one can apply when one talks about the importance of Raman spectroscopy in chemistry. Now let's summarize the contents that we have studied so far. There are two types of geometries in which a sample is analyzed in Raman spectroscopy. In the 90 degrees Raman spectroscopy geometry, the laser beam direction is at right angles to the collection lens. On the contrary, in the 180 degrees geomet scattering geometry, also known as the backscattering mode, these two areas are coincident. The 90 degree scattering geometry is normally used in the conventional Raman spectroscopy, whereas both 90 degrees and 180 degrees modes are frequently used in the FTI, uh, FT Raman spectroscopy. With the advancement of a Raman microprobe system, now a sample area can be as small as one microgram, which can be studied with this new advanced techniques, which was not the case earlier. The amount of tested material needed could be 
as low as several pictograms, 10 to 12 pictograms, or femtoliters, 10 to 15 femtoliters. No biopsy is needed in this Raman spectroscopy for diagnostic activities. Sampling is very easy and the information contents that we get is very, very high. Thank you very much.